Hi guys, welcome back to another vlog. So in the past two videos, I was talking about upgrading the 350Z. Um, in the last video, we did an ISR exhaust on the 350Z and it sounded really, really amazing. Go check that video out if you're a new subscriber and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, um, I think the video before that, we introduced all the parts that we were gonna install on the 350Z. So, in today's vlog, We'll be upgrading the coolant system, get the 350Z to be a little cooler. So around 205 degrees is when our fans kick on. Um, I'm not big on like specification on when fans should be turned on on 350Zs, um, but I know from forms that I read that usually when they drive their 350Zs, their coolant system is about 180 to 185 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, just driving um, the 350z it gets about I think the hottest it gets whenever it goes whenever we go and drive it is probably 95 195 and then it drops around 186 so it always fluctuates and um, I think it's time to upgrade the uh, cooling system we basically we just have the basics we have a new thermostat uh, straight from Z1 Motorsports and if you guys like to know where we got all these parts i'll put everything in the description down below we got an oem thermostat housing with a thermostat a isr silicone hoses and we got a thick cfs um radiator so what i'll be doing i'll be taking out the old radiator comparing it to this radiator because there's a big size comparison between these two and let's just say the reason why I went with this radiator, because one, it's way, way thicker. This is about a two and a half inch radiator. Let's pull out the measuring tape. Actually, this radiator is about almost three inches. It's gonna cool way better than this stock HR radiator we put in a while back. We had to rig up this system because we did not have any of the OEM parts. This one is probably an inch off from my my 1UZ swap S14 radiator, which is right here. This is a chase base radiator. I really wanted to get a coil rad, but since this is automatic, coil rad doesn't make automatic radiators. So guys, I'm gonna show you guys how to take out your radiator. There's a lot of things to do for this thing. So I'll probably go not step by step, but I'll talk about what you need to start taking out and stuff. To get today started, let's see how cool we can get this 350Z today. All right, let's get dirty with coolant. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna have to come under here. There's gonna be a drain port. We're gonna twist that, let all the coolant spill out, and then we're gonna unclamp the hose from here, and then the hose up top, and then we'll take these two hoses off. Well, yeah, there's one right here. We'll take that hose off and then we'll take that hose off. All right guys, for my guys, for the uh, automatic 350Zs, you're gonna wanna clamp these uh, lines. These are your transmission cooler lines, but uh, clamp them because you will lose transmission fluid. All right, now since we have the lower radiator hose disconnected, now we can start working from the top. We're gonna have to take off the fans, but first I'm gonna take off this hose. The old upper hose is off. So now we're gonna start taking off these two connectors for the fans, a bolt right here, and then there's supposed to be a bolt right here. And then once we get that off, then we should be able to lift up the fans, but we also gotta do this. Take these off. These actually lock in the radiator. Put those up there. 
and then we'll start taking these off. You guys have a cooling system, uh, AC system, you're gonna have to take out these 10 millimeter bolts right here, and then it'll detach from your radiator. All right guys, when you're taking your radiator out, make sure that the condenser, you get it off of these tabs right here, and then after that, you can pull it out. So I'm gonna compare the radiators. Let's see how thick this is, which is probably gonna be about, so it's little under two, and this one's little under three, so we'll say this is three, and this is two. Actually, one and a, one and, one and three quarters. So this radiator is so much thicker than this one, and the cool thing about it, it has the condenser, oh, is it right there? Yeah, yeah, it has the uh, things for your content condenser. Before we uh, put the radiator in, what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace this hose right here, and then we're gonna also gonna take off the lower hose and start working on the new thermostat. Well, basically, you're just gonna take off this clamp right here, this clamp right here, and then you're gonna um, take off this 10 millimeter bolt right there, and then we'll get to the thermostat. I have no clue why it was such a pain in the ass to take off this line that goes all the way over here. Both of these were so fucking hard to take off, I had to cut them. It was it was just a pain in the ass. I have no clue when the last time this stuff was replaced or anything like that. We got that uh, hose that goes from here to here. It's time we're gonna start taking, hopefully this doesn't give me a uh, big problem, this one, because the thermostat is literally right here. The thermostat housing, and then once we take that off, we're gonna install the new, the new OEM thermostat. This car has about a hundred and almost 160,000 miles. So we're gonna put a new one on with a new thermostat. From the looks of it, it's gonna be three bolts. They look like 10 millimeters. Our local auto parts store had the gasket that I needed. All right, if it's perfect. <clears throat> so this gasket is a Felpro gasket. I've never had any problems with Felpro before. But if you guys feel more safe using OEM, go ahead. Go for it, guys. Moment of truth. I just have one more hose to put on. It was just a hassle doing all these hoses and filming. So I'll explain everything. I had to go get some warm clamps for this top hose. So I got two warm clamps for this. I used the OEM brackets and it went perfectly on. Now I have the lower radiator hose on from here down there. Then you put the upper radiator hose and then we're gonna start installing the new radiator. So I think I'm gonna put this in first and then I'm gonna put the, um, what is it called? The condenser on and let it line up with these and then we'll put the fans on the fans bolts should literally bolt in right here or actually right there those two so basically you're just going backwards how you took everything out you put everything back in same way So I did come across a, a few problems with this bigger radiator. It's harder to get your fans in. You gotta do a couple of cuttings. We cut this part out right here where your uh, outlet goes. So I can make it smooth, uh, make it more uh, more easier to fit it. And then I had to cut both of these uh, arms that were holding the fan with a good chunk right here. They should be fine. We will upgrade to bigger fans, to uh, better fans and stuff. And then on this side, I had to cut this arm because this arm is actually pushing the lower uh, radiator hose towards the AC pulley. So, 
Now I had to rewire the, I mean, I had to relocate the, the wires, move them more up over here so they won't get in the fan's way or anything like that or touch a pulley or anything. So now we're gonna put it in there and see how it goes. Radiator's finally in. We got everything in. Dude, this radiator's so fucking nice. I gotta do it a getaway, boys and girls. But yes, dude, it looks really, really nice with the new ISR uh, hosing and all that stuff. New thermostat. So, guys, as of right now, I am bleeding the system. With these 350Zs, they, they do take a lot of patience to bleed them. They're not hard. You just gotta have patience because they take a, a good minute what will help out with doing these is this uh this bleeder right here it'll put your um what is it it'll put it higher than your engine so it makes it bleed faster um usually that will burp the system and then you have a you have a bleeder valve over here and what you do is you'll barely crack it you'll you until you see like bubbles don't fully do it you see all those bubbles popping You'll keep on doing this process until you have no more bubbles or no and no more bubbles in there. So right now we're we're at 177 uh, degrees right now. I have the heaters on. It helps if you have the heater on and all that stuff. So put your heaters on. It'll help bleed the system faster. And yeah. system let's see if it overheats it was doing pretty good the highest it got was 200 which is five uh, degrees less than it usually does which is pretty cool so I'm gonna set it I'm gonna set it up on my scanner so I can look at the actual degrees as of right now if you guys can see that the temp is 177 so it always used to be 186 when we drive, which is crazy, dude. It's almost 10 degrees cooler than normal. Usually when we drive the Z, before we put this new uh, radiator in it, it would hit, max would be 190, all right? 190 driving, 186 on a good day. Dude, so I went around the loop uh, a couple times and it stayed consistently 177 degrees, which is crazy because that is 10 degrees cooler than the stock radiator if you guys want a better radiator i definitely would go with cfs dude so fucking good and at idle it usually gets the 205 and the fans kick on let's see where we're at now yeah consistently staying at 192 with no fans on dude that's crazy really cool well guys we still got a lot to do with the Z. I still have to do some brakes. I'll show you guys. I don't think I'll be doing a vlog on this because I rather vlog us doing the uh, the big brake kit on this. But we're basically just putting regular brake pad. Oh my god, these are heavy. Regular uh, slotted and drilled brakes. I mean, slotted and drilled rotors with regular brakes uh, calipers and stuff. Because this thing needs new rotors, new pads all that stuff if you guys enjoyed today's video don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i'll put everything that i put installed into the z in the description down below so guys i'll see you guys on the next vlog